I'm going to be talking about two books which are both, in, a, in their own different ways, collections of short stories or recollections about living through war. The first I'm going to talk about is Jokes for the Gunman by Marzen Maruf, and this is translated by Jonathan Wright. And the second one I'm going to talk about is Under Pressure by Farouk Shehitz, and this one's translated by Mirza Puric. So, Jokes for the Gunman. Marzen Maruf, he was born to Palestinian parents in Beirut, so I believe his parents were Palestinian refugees in Beirut, and he was born there in the late 70s, which was quite a bad time to be born in Lebanon because it was in the early stages of the very long Lebanese civil war. The stories in this collection aren't explicitly about the Lebanese civil war. The locations, although they all seem to be set in cities, they're not specific cities, but you can sort of infer that part of it is driven by his experience growing up in Lebanon during the Lebanese civil war. Connected to that is the fact that most of the stories are from a child's perspective, or at least a childlike perspective. And on top of that, many of them have a kind of surreal element to them, almost a magical realism type element to them. And you can connect that to the childlike perspective of them. You can sort of see it as this is almost like a child's recollections or a child's perspective or a child's dreams and or how a child is processing incomprehensibly difficult to process, which is the trauma of living through a major, long, bloody war. I think in these stories there's an element of humour. Part of the surrealness is kind of, it's almost silly in a way, darkly humorous. And this perspective, I feel like I recognise it in the people I've known who have lived through the Lebanese Civil War. And I think part of it might come from the fact that that war was so long, decades long, that it really became part of everyday life. And when war happens, you don't stop being alive, you don't stop being a person, and you don't stop finding things to laugh at. And that gets wrapped up in the trauma and in the post-trauma of living through the war. And so I feel like reading this book felt, it rang true in a way for me. Sort of about being a survivor, a child, a survivor of war who had been a child. Maybe their whole childhood was spent in a war zone. But now, looking back, you're living your life, you're an adult, you're relatively safe now, but you're coping with that trauma. I don't know, it's very complicated. I'm struggling to express what I mean. But I feel like if you read the book, then maybe he manages to convey that really well. And that's the sense that I got from it. And not having lived through a war myself, thankfully, but from people I've known who have lived through wars, I can recognise what I have picked up from talking to them in the book. So I think it's, it's an entertaining read, it's a thoughtful read, it will communicate something to you that may or may not be part of your experience yourself, and I think it's well worth a read. It was long listed for the International Booker Prize this year, and it was originally published in Arabic in 2015, and it was published in English this year by Grant Books. The second book I'm going to talk about, Under Pressure by Farouk Shehid. This one is a lot more brutal. Farouk Shehid, during the Bosnian War, he is a Bosniak and was in the Bosnian army. He was an officer in the army and he was on the front lines for most of that four year war. And the book is a collection of mostly very short chapters or stories or entries and um, there's no content page at the beginning so I'm not sure how many of them there are but each block is maybe like four to seven pages or something like that. Although the book is not very long, it's less than 200 pages, it's so dense with feeling and dense with trauma again and dense with experience that it took me forever to get through because after each very short part of the book I felt like I needed to have a mental rest and process it and let it sink in. It's a much more sober book, ironically, because a lot of it is about getting really drunk as often as you can to try and forget about the war. There is kind of a humorous element to it, but it's not that silliness. It's not that kind of dark silliness. It's more like it's just, it's dark mirth, but not in a laugh out loud way. The humor of it is a bit emptier, a bit more because you're in this war zone, you've got nothing to lose but your life, and this is the papering over that experience, some of the humour between the soldiers and things like that. So it's a collection, it's got poetry in it, 
It's got kind of stories. Some of it feels like diary entries. It's all based on his experience on the front line and on leave and everything during the war. The stories don't directly connect. It's sort of a collage or a montage in a way. It is a very heavy, stressful read. It is poetically written and kind of beautifully written in a way. One thing that I've seen criticised a little bit in a review, and which I would kind of agree with, is that the way some of the dialogue is translated, I imagine in the original Bosnian, it's kind of colloquial, working class type language that they're trying to convey. So they use a kind of a English that is meant to be using kind of working class language, but it doesn't come across very naturally, I think, some of that. So that is a little bit drawing, especially at the beginning of the book. Uh, but I think that overall, the translation is well done. It's very hard hitting. The last few chapters of the book are set after the war and you see the effects of the trauma, the ongoing effects of the trauma of war and the post-traumatic elements. I feel like it's extremely honest and it's extremely direct. He's not trying to make himself look like the, the good guy or the hero. It's all kind of disturbing, both what he's experiencing and to a large extent what he's doing. A bit like Jokes on the Gunman, I do feel like it gives you a very different perspective over what it's like living through a war, this time from the soldier's perspective rather than the child's perspective in the war zone. So they both taught me something about war. They're both sort of fictionalised or semi-fictionalised expressions of experiences of war, both two different specific wars and kind of the universality of those experiences, especially Jokes on the Gunman, which doesn't specify a location or a war. So you can kind of apply that to whatever is whatever will make it relevant to you. I think with Under Pressure, it is very fragmented. It is quite difficult to read a lot of it in one go. I would recommend, if you wanted to pick it up, reading one or two of the units a day maybe. Don't try and rush through it, let those sink in. And so on the cover, you've got this sort of head and you've got all of these images of soldiers and war like images flying out. Shrapnel in general is a big feature of a lot of the stories. And I feel like this is quite representative of, of the book itself. You've got this kind of, this war experience, this trauma, but it's not one contained whole. It's in the form of shattered shrapnel kind of flying everywhere. And it comes from the same place, but it's all going in different directions. It's all got slightly different shapes and it's all kind of horrible. So there you go, two books about war, heavy as you would expect, but both very enlightening in different ways. The best art communicates something from the artist and when they do, when they're able to communicate something that I as a reader haven't experienced at all, but I feel like I don't get the experience, but I get a kind of a flavour of it. I think that's great art. So I think both of them I would call great books in that sense, not necessarily enjoyable reads, not perfect books, but if you want to know more about those wars, but not from a not in a terms of a timeline and these are the facts and this is the statistics, but more the experiences of them, then I think these books convey that, convey, you know, a certain person's experience of that really well. Thanks for watching. If you want to ask anything or say anything about these books, leave a comment on YouTube. If I don't talk to you again before then, have a very lovely Christmas. Chanukah Sameach, and I'll see you in the next one.